Welcome back to Veterans Forum, a program by veterans, about veterans, for veterans and their families. I'm your co-host, Bob West, with Ray Chattery and Jerry Devlin. Our goal is to provide important information to you and your family about legislation, benefits, support, and activities for you and your family. Tonight, we're going to give you an update on veterans legislation in Annapolis and in Washington. Jerry, what's the latest in Annapolis? Well, the latest, of course, in, in Annapolis is uh, uh, our two bills, have had, principal bills, have had hearings. And that one is the bill to provide a subtraction modification on the state income tax so that military pensions would not be subject to state taxation. Presently, this is the law probably in 15 states or more, because several states don't have income taxes, New Hampshire, Texas, Nevada, some others, Florida. Um, and Pennsylvania, though, exempts all, all military pensions from state taxation. Presently, the first uh, $5,000 is exempt. Uh, we'd like to, this year, uh, Senator Peters from our own 23rd district has a bill to raise this figure to $10,000. Of course, like all bills that involve spending, uh, it, it has a very, very uncertain uh, future. Um, because Maryland, like all the states except Vermont, has a balanced budget requirement so that you have to you can't adjourn until the budget's balanced. And when you take taxes off somewhere, you have to put them on somewhere else. Now, the feel, our feeling, and those the proponents of the bill, is that the money would be made up by veterans who would come and stay in Maryland. We have a, a large number of people coming to the state because of BRAC, the Base Area Relocation Act, and. Um, and of course, veterans who live here uh, would perhaps might stay here rather than seek uh, uh, domicile in a state where pensions or income taxes, both or either, are exempt. So uh, that, this is important both for Maryland, but you can't you can't use that as a budget balancer because the the amount of money is too speculative. So you have to, you have to have balanced income without go, and, and that that you can't do. So it has a fairly not a great deal of fiscal note, but it has. Um, uh, a significant one, like 10 or 12 million dollars. The other, of course, is a bill that passed the Senate last year. Again, it was a bill by Senator Peters uh, to b allow uh, instant bingo games, which look and sound like slot machines, but you can't use the word slot machines because if you if you have slot machines now, you'd have to bring them to referendum. So it's an instant bingo game, quite similar to the kind that if you are gambling folk uh, down at Chesapeake Beach in the Rod and Reel. Uh, the bill passed the Senate. Mike Miller took personal interest in it, the Senate president passed the Senate 46 to nothing and then went over to the House the last day and instead of going to the Ways and Means Committee, which I thought it should have, it went to the Rules Committee and they sat on it. Uh, the problem, of course, in the House is the House leadership have to be convinced that this, this is a good bill. And also you have the problem of convincing the governor's office that this wouldn't take away from other slot venues. And our point, of course, is we have a closed membership and, and the only people who would use it would be our members and their guests. So we're, we're very hopeful on this and we think there's some support for it. And uh, the legislature, I represent uh, down in Annapolis, I represent uh, the Marine Corps League, the Disabled Veterans, uh, the Joint Veterans Committee of Maryland, uh, and the Prince George's County Veterans Commission, and of course the local chapters and detachments. And it's hard because you don't have the veterans serving in the legislature like you used to. When I was in the legislature from this district, uh, Dave Ross and Leo Green and I were in the House in 1974, and Ed Conroy was a senator, and Ed, of course, was a, uh, a disabled um, one-armed veteran from lost his arm at Hartbreak Ridge in Korea and was national president of the disabled veterans. So you didn't really have to explain veterans' bills too extensively to Ed. And then Leo and Dave fought, uh, served in the United States Army. Dave Ross, by the way, retired as a colonel in the, in the in an Army Reserve. And, of course, I was in the Marine Corps. So we, we had something. That ne so now our problem is explaining to legislators. And I'm happy. Well, in this district, uh, in no the North Bowie District, 23A, <coughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, the... Uh, um, Jim Hubbard and Geraldine Valentino Smith are are not uh, veterans, but Jim is uh, is the son of a career Marine, so he's been a solid supporter, no problems with it, with him, and he he's with us on everything. And I'm really happy to report that I don't think any freshman legislator has gotten in and as enthusiastically pro-veteran as Geraldine Valentino Smith. Uh, members of her family, a very close family, uh, uh, have served and I mean, even are serving in the in the Middle East. 
And of course, Doug Peters, our senator, is a decorated veteran of Operation Desert Storm. So, but but this is now, you know, when when I was younger, you know, if you weren't a, if you weren't a veteran, uh, you uh, you really had some explaining to do, both at the legislative level, and the congressional level. You know, you had voters like my father. My father and my mother were very different how they t dealt with campaign literature. My mother was a member of the uh, Telephone Operators Union, and, and mom was a pretty tough I tough item. The girlhood nickname was Spike, and she one time got convicted on punching a strike breaker. So she looked at literature that didn't have a union bug into the trash can. And Dad, of course, was a combat veteran, a serious combat veteran of World War One, and um, and if you weren't a veteran, you know, Dad just wasn't interested in, in your candidacy. That's why my father was so enthusiastic about. Uh, uh, Harry Truman, because my dad, you know, originally was with the British Army when they had a separate command. Uh, tr the Missouri National Guard was the next unit on the line to, uh, and of course, Harry Truman was a captain in the Missouri National Guard. So dad was an enthusiastic, uh, very enthusiastic supporter of Harry Truman. But I mean, that's, uh, it, times have changed. You know? Well, that's true. And, and here we are in late February, and uh, we're watching these bills as they get through the legislature, uh, some have already have hearings. Uh, have, we, uh, have we had a feeling of how we think these no, it's too early. things are going? It's too early. It's far too early. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, we also have some uh, other bills, I guess they're more ho housekeeping bills, like the uh, permanent sales tax exemption. That, has, that one has that's shot out of the uh, Senate. It's been passed by the Senate on third reader. It's in the House. I mean, that's one of the first bills. They've, it was the first veterans bill to pass this year. And that, that enjoys almost unanimous support. I mean, that's godmother and the flag, you know. Mm -hmm. But it does, it does have a small fiscal note. You know, for example, this year, you, 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 the governor's office, I mean, they'll have to veto b bills that are, are, are budget busters. For example, if you, pass, if, if you can't pass a bill that increases state revenue unless in the bill you, you have a, a, a tax, I mean, something that raises the revenue. And for example, this year, for example, on, on, and everything everything ties into everything else. This year, the, uh, um, the Court of Appeals has passed a bill that seems to require that there be lawyers, uh, public defenders at, at bond hearings for everybody who's arrested, and then have and have public defenders at all bond hearings. Um, that may sound like a great idea, but immediately you're talking about twenty-eight million dollars, and that's probably two or three times the fiscal note on the bill for the subtraction modification. One of the things about Annapolis is everything ties into everything else. Um, for example, uh, I had an intern when I was in the house and she wrote her paper, said the most important lesson that she learned was sitting in the bar at Fran O'Brien's and she heard uh, Walter Dean was a veteran legislator and, and there was a, a freshman legislator from Baltimore and the freshman said, I don't believe in this vote trading. He said, I believe every bill should be considered on its merits, the good ones I'm for, the bad ones I'm against. He was a preacher. And Walter Dean said, Reverend, I would be the last one to tell you how to vote. But when you're down here a while and you want to bring something home to those folks back there in Baltimore, you're going to discover that maybe that bridge over the Chop Tank River that they're talking about building, maybe that doesn't look like such a bad idea. So as I say, things, are, things do tie. And, and, uh, and of course, the, 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 the legislature, one of the things that in Mar the legislature is very different than Congress. Uh, the power of the Speaker and the President of the Senate is awesome. Um, in, in Congress in 1911, they took away the institutional powers of, of the, the Speaker of the House. That's why, for example, uh, Speaker Boehner, if it were before 1911, he'd tell the Tea Party what they vote for. And, um, and uh, you know, and you, can't, you just can't do that anymore. The Speaker of the U.S. House has a power of persuasion. But in, in Annapolis, the Speaker of the House determines all the members of the committee and, and the chairman and the various leadership positions. So if you get in a war with the speaker, you may, you know, you might be on the committee on unnecessary state papers. <laughs> and it used to be even worse because when I was on the governor's staff in 1970, in that era, uh, there only were really two standing committees in the House. And there was the Ways and Means Committee, which included appropriations. It was, did both, the taxes and the, and the appropriating, and the Judiciary Committee. The other members were on little insignificant committees like Chesapeake Bay and tributaries or insurance or something. And Harry McGurk, who was a senator of Baltimore, told me one time he voted against Marvin Mandel when Mandel was, speaker of the, was chairman of the Ways and Means Committee. He said, they not only put me 
kicked me off the Ways and Means Committee. I was on no committee for two and a half years. <laughs> So that uh, so that's why I mean it's convincing. I mean, you know, for example, once 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 we got Mike Miller on our side, the Senate just went the way we want. But Mike Bush has a family situation. I think there were compulsive gamblers, a father, a grand something. There's a he, and he's he's just not an instinctively pro gambler pro gambling person. And you know, and you have the philosophical argument of gambling, and you know, mm -hmm. it, and which we have here. Yeah. And, and Ray, one of the other. Uh, uh, important committees that uh, uh, we're very familiar with is the Joint Veterans Committee. Right. And they always push for legislation. Right. And you've been the adjutant uh, there for years. And you might want to give our viewers a little input on uh, the Joint Veterans Committee, uh, their purpose, and when they meet, because right. people can show up to right. the meetings. Uh, and a little bit about uh, uh, you know what we're doing right now as far as trying to get the legislators uh, focused on our veterans' bills. Okay, well, I'll do that, but then I do want to address the, uh, the instant bingo bill because of commander of the DAV here in Bowie. It really affects us. Uh, the Joint Veterans Committee of Maryland is made up of the six six of the major constitutionally <clears throat> chartered organizations: AMVETS, Catholic War Veterans, Disabled American Veterans. Marine Corps League, Military Order of Purple Heart, and Veterans of Foreign Wars. And the state commanders and the immediate past commander are automatic chairman by virtue of rank, and they can, they can designate eight delegates, and all the past chairmen of that organization are permanent members of the Joint Veterans. Um, I'm a past chairman, of I've been secretary now since 1993. Uh, Jerry is the vice chairman this year, and he'll come in... Uh, in September, he'll be voted in as chairman from the disabled from the Marine Corps League. From the Marine Corps League, uh, he he wore his state commander's hat, and uh, the Marine Corps, and we do it by rotation. Um, and the Marine Corps League, and then the following year will be probably the, I think it's the Purple Heart that, that will be in line, and they do it in rotation. This way, it uh, there's no uh, one organization doesn't control anything. Um, our biggest thing is uh, right now is that we. Jerry talked about the bills. Uh, one thing he'll probably talk about later will be the Veterans Court that we're trying yep. to get. Because that's, that's only in the, um, what the, the form, forming stage yeah. with the, the uh, committee. Yeah, we're committee trying stage. to get a study group even on that. Um, presently, you have a special, it's called a specialty court, and you have one in Erie County, New York, which is the city of Buffalo, recognizing the fact that veterans who come into the judicial system have special problems. I mean, you have post-traumatic stress syndrome and other things. So uh, we're trying, and the problem with that, and again, uh, that one I have to stay away from because I still sit as a part-time judge and I'm subject to the canons of judicial ethics and I can't take positions for the judiciary, even, I mean, even though I never appear for the judiciary uh, and, until the uh, chief judge of the Court of Appeals, uh, you know, takes a position. I can't take a, you know, legally, I, or politically or whatever, I can't take a position out, so I don't testify on that one. Now we meet at the DAV in Bowie, and we have meet there the past several times because we're pretty much centrally located. Everybody travels. We have, we have come, people come from the Eastern Shore, Hagerstown, Frederick, um, West, uh, Southern Maryland, Baltimore area, and, and everybody drives a little bit. So uh, we've been meeting, we've been meeting right in Bowie, and we meet the third Wednesday of the month from September through March. And uh, right now we have coming up uh, our Veteran of the Year, uh, and it's from Bowie, uh, Tony Beganwald, who was very active with the uh, Marine Corps League, and he's the, uh, his claim, claim to fame has been his uh, visits to the uh, Walter Reed and um, Bethesda Naval Hospital attending to the wounded warriors. And now that there's a combined uh, facility at Bethesda, uh, that's what he's been doing. And they're going to start their cookouts uh, coming up in... Uh, this in March, but getting back to the Joint Veterans, uh, we're very active. Jerry uh, is testifies on almost every bill when he's not working that deals with veterans, and uh, and uh, the, the ones that, like I said, the ones we're really pushing is the the retirement bill, the and the one I'd like to really talk about right now is our instant bingo. Uh, people don't realize that they just had their 25th anniversary on the Eastern Shore of having slots down there and it's caused no problems whatsoever. And the way I look at it, they're discriminating against the veterans on the Western Shore. 
And like in Bowie, we have four major veterans organizations, but there's only two chapter, two homes. Well, the DAV has one, and we're the only one in the state. We're the only DAV chapter home in the state of Maryland, and there's 25 or 26 chapters yeah. that meet other places. Um, I get our Bob is commander of the VFW, and the VFW post meets there along with the Marine Corps League. And then the ladies, well, the, the DAV ladies auxiliary, the Marine Corps doesn't have an auxiliary. But the, regarding the slot machine or this instant bingo, is uh, we have our, um, the Nevada clubs right now that uh, Senator Peters saved for us. Uh, they, were, they wanted to go ahead and do, disband that here in the county. And he went and said, look, these, these organizations need these things. And, uh, and, it's, and it's, one of our, uh, it's one of our many fundraisers that we have. At, and one, night, one thing about people don't realize that we are closed membership. In other words, a person off the street cannot come in and even buy a Coke unless he's a, a veteran. Or, and then, then we sign them as a guest. But if it's a person off of the street, they're not, they can't come in. And if a member of the VFW or the American Legion or the Marine Corps League or any of the veterans organizations, um, you know, they can come in and be a guest. And, and unless you're a member of Chapter 7, you have to sign in as a guest, even if you're another DAV member. Like when, I, when we go to uh, 8950 uh, with our meetings, uh, Bob and I, we both sign in as guests over there because we're not members of that post. And it's very close hold. And on uh, um, our liquor license uh, prevents us from doing a lot of things because we have a class C license and we're restricted like our hours. We have to be, we, we're only allowed to be open to a certain amount of time and such like that. And we're, uh, I'm glad I have a very good club manager who is really stickler on detail and we keep it. But uh, we can get five slot machines in our post or the chapter home and if the American Legion could get five and the way they have it broke down right now is 50% of the income would stay in Bowie. 10% would go to the state and then there's, there's another 40% and we were ta we talked to uh, executive Bank, executive, uh, County Executive Rashern Baker about maybe taking part of that money and sending it to the county to have a full paid veterans department in the county because we have the largest veterans population in the in the state of Maryland. We have close to 80,000 veterans that live here in uh, in Prince George's County. Of course we have Andrews Air Force Base, major base, and I think that's the only major base we have in uh, Prince George's. Because we're Fort affected Meade. by Fort, uh, right. Fort, Fort Meade. Fort Meade and Anne Arundel. Yeah. And right. the Naval Academy. Right. right. Anne Naval Academy is yeah. Anne Arundel. Yeah. But uh, as I say, there again, it's there. There we're still driving, mm -hmm. driving. Mm -hmm. in bowling and Andrews are in D.C. But DC. we're all affected. Andrews, of course, is here. Right. But bowling is in, in, right. in D.C. Yeah. But uh, as I say, the but we, the present law is absurd. You know, I ran a uh, delegate Mary Delaney James from Harford County had me go up and chair a panel on veterans matters up in Harford County and it was in an American Legion post. Someone pointed out that the Susquehanna River divides Harford County from Cecil County. Maybe a mile away across the river was an American Legion post that did have these machines, five of them. And like last year, they, I think it was the American Legion post in Salisbury, took in a million dollars. Mm -hmm. and, and our problem with veterans, of course, we're, we're, we're an organization, we, we, we stand on our head to try to attract young people, but we're, we're an organization of gray-headed people, if, if they have hair at all. And, uh, and, and um, many of the members are getting old and fundraising. The, 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 our needs are growing greater and greater, and our ability to send people out and work for it is, is smaller and smaller. You know, we used to do a lot of begging at, uh, for, the, uh, for the DAV, but you can't get people physically able to do it anymore in many cases. Yeah. Well, that's I true. tell my wife that it's a, I'm, I'm 78, and it's the state DAV is one of the few organizations where you can go to, and at 78, you don't feel old. Yeah, like probably the most important uh, person at the State Department, Department of Maryland, is, is Bill McCartan. And he was uh, state commander 50 years ago. So you kind of <laughs> puts yeah. it all into kind of context. Well, that sort of gets us into another area. But before I do, uh, what some of our members, uh, our viewers don't know is both you, Ray, and Jerry have been uh, Maryland Veterans of the Year yes. as the Joint Veterans Committee. And that's, uh, that's really an honor 
to pick one veteran in the entire state to uh, represent veterans as the veterans of the year, and we're very pleased to have both of you. Um, let's talk about uh, Charlotte Hall. Now that uh, Jerry had mentioned that uh, we're kind of creeping along in age, tell us about uh, Charlotte Hall, Ray. Hey, yo. Well, I served on the commission down here for nine years. Uh, uh, Governor Glenn Denning appointed me, and um, I served for nine years. And uh, at that time, we were pushing 50, 60 percent. And now they're up to 90 percent full. Uh, because, well, what they did is they had 504 beds at one time. And due to the increasing, uh, like they have a dental department now and they have a few other departments, they took a portion of one wing and closed down about 35 or 40 rooms in order to make room for more services, uh, which uh, now, as I say, put us at 90 percent. So we're going to probably next legislative year, we'll try to get a panel to study uh, getting another home here in, in Maryland, uh, probably either at Fort Howard or Fort Detrick, um, somewhere where the government already owns property and is more centrally located. As a, if we put something way out in Western Maryland, it'd be just like Charlotte Hall. Like there's nobody west of Baltimore or west of Frederick, it's Charlotte Hall. And like from Bowie, from Bowie to Charlotte Hall, it's 35 miles one way. Most people so. from far West Maryland receive their veterans care in West Virginia. Right, Martinsburg. At Martinsburg, right. yeah. It's, a, it's, so, it's even closer to them than you going, forget going it, to Baltimore. Maryland's a small state, but it's, it's everywhere. Right. It's, it's, <laughs> uh, for example, uh, uh, Garrett County, the, Oakland is the county seat. Oakland is closer to Canada than it is to Ocean City. Think Just about that's it. how we're spread out. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and now the other thing too is uh, the needs of uh, of uh, women veterans. Right. Because I know Charlotte Hall is working on uh, doing more for our female veterans uh, down there for care. Right. Yeah. They, they've uh, they've they've done a lot of down there. And while we're talking about that, the remember Dennis Smith when he was here. He's the director of the Maryland uh, Healthcare System, saying that they're making a wing. They're closing in um, up at Baltimore. Of course, they can't go sideways. They have to go up. When they had this great big foyer, and they're closing, uh, they're making floors uh, off out of the, um, where they had the atrium, and uh, they're having a woman's veterans wing. But uh, getting, ba getting back to our local, uh, people don't realize uh, our service. Uh, we have two service officers, uh, and we're going to have a service officer training program at DAV on the 3rd of March. It's being, uh, the DAV will be getting certified, the chapter and department. Right now we have 40 veterans that will be attending that. And, uh, but our service dollars, like we paid the Chapter 7, since, since Tony's a member, uh, we paid for the Christmas dinner at uh, Bethesda this year. Um, Everybody gets a holiday, so you couldn't even buy a cup of coffee at Bethesda. And we found out about this, so about six to seven years ago, they decided to have a uh, Christmas dinner. And the first year, the Cozy Inn up in, Ball, up in uh, Thurmont, who's a former Marine, he foot the bill. He donated all the food, and uh, so Chapter 7 paid for it. And we're paying for the first cookout that they're going to have at uh, the 23rd, I think it's around the 23rd of March, which is a Wednesday. It was really good. So um, to say that that's why we need we need to go ahead and get service dollars into the into the uh, into our chapters. Which brings up a collateral sort of issue. Um, the vet, all the veterans organizations. There's always been a reluctance on the part of women veterans. Uh, to join veterans. They think it's just some of the guys and so forth. And, and I'd really like to disabuse women of that notion. And a very good thing, I just came back last week. I was uh, most of the week at the Marine Corps League uh, National Midwinter Convention. Several people noticed that many speakers got up and, and, and described how they were providing the special services for the special needs of women veterans and so forth. And several people commented how seriously that issue was being taken. Now these are a lot of old guys. I mean, these are not, you know, young people have much, tend to have much uh, more progressive ideas on 
on those kind of things. But everybody realizes uh, that we've got a long way to go. And, you know, 30 years ago, there had been snickering and things like that. And there was none of that. And everybody was saying, and, you know, they, they, again, the Marine Corps League wants to recruit um, women. And, and by the way, you know, we're, we're a little different than the other services. We never had a cutesy poo name for women in the service. We were never waves or wax or spars. In World War II, they were founded as women Marines. And then as Ray and I know, we, we talked to a general, and, and Ray used the expression women Marines. And you know, a female general, she said, well, you know, we don't have women Marines anymore. We just have Marines. Marines yeah. right. So we, we stepped back and, well, you know, but this is a, so, you know, and so any woman out there would like to join the VUI, come down. It's a, it's a, it'll, you'll, you'll be treated respectfully, and it's, a, it, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, the only common tie we have is, is is that we're veterans, you know. We used to say in the Marine Corps about color, the only color we consider is marine green. Right. And veterans. Now, one thing we, that I wanted to say real fast, we're running, we're, we're getting ready to run out of time. It's hard to believe. But the, um, to get the women in, the back in the early 60s, during Vietnam, the DAV changed their um, charter where it used to be combat injury. They took out combat to allow females to be eligible and, for and, benefits. And clergy, clergymen and, right. uh, and, and doctors and nurses. Right. Technically, they're not under the Geneva Convention. They're not in combat. Right. But if they get blown up, and they're just as, just as dead as the, as the rest of us. And then, and then the first Gulf War is the first time we really saw women in combat. So the last 20 some odd years, and that's the reason why we're really taking really good aim at getting women benefits now because they, they are in combat now. We were at the DAV a couple of years ago in the, at Happy Hour and a group of mostly Marines and we're talking about combat. And the only one who had ever been shot at was a woman Marine, uh, Mary Devine, who was then the secretary. Right. She had been shot at in, in, uh, in uh, Iraq. Right. And uh, also, uh, uh, both of you are still in the uh, Veterans Commission, which is still going on uh, once a month down right. at well, the- Right, well, uh, Jerry's acting chairman. Right. Okay. So uh, there's, there's a lot of things to do, a lot of places to go, and, uh, but you need to get active. You need to come out, uh, you uh, as the veteran or the family member, uh, come out and visit the post and see what's going on because uh, you need to learn more about your benefits, make sure you're getting your benefits, you've earned them, uh, and get involved in, uh, in the local community and, and uh, meet and uh, greet your other veterans. Well, you're right, Ray, it's hard to believe. We're, uh, we finished up another show. Uh, I want to thank um, Tom Allen as our director and Bill Brown as uh, one of the stage crew. And uh, we encourage you to stop by the DAV on Route 197 or uh, the American Legion on Laurel Bowie Road and uh, see what's happening with the local veterans community. And we do need young people uh, to give us uh, some ideas of what your interests are. So uh, please give us a, a call, stop in and see us. Uh, we'd be happy to uh, meet with you and discuss anything you'd uh, like to talk about as far as uh, veterans legislation is concerned or your benefits. And thanks again for watching Veterans Forum.